Hello, everybody. Welcome to Thursday, February 11th. And this is part four, maybe, of our landscape quilt. So I am so glad to see you. And I cut my hair this week. I couldn't stand it anymore. It was limp. And, you know, as some of us girls get a little older, the hair gets a little thinner. <laughs> So it's like, oh, I got to get it fluffed up a little bit. So I sat, I stood in the bathroom and I just took scissors, in fact, sewing scissors, and I cut it. And I said, you know what? If it doesn't work out, I can always grow it back out. So hello, all of you. Don't let me forget. Don't let me forget tonight that oops let me see hold on let me there is stuff on my screen so <laughs> that stuff on my screen's in the way let me figure out what i'm supposed to be doing i don't know um let me see nope it's still there mark helped me reload the camera because it's been getting dimmer and dimmer, and we thought I did something wrong. So, there. We no, it came back. <laughs> okay. All right, let's. It's still there. Oh, Mark. What do we do? I do not know. So... Let's see. Ah. Uh, uh, oh. I don't think he's checking on me tonight. So he doesn't realize that I have a bunch of little things up. And no way to get them off of the screen. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> this is just way too funny. Actually, it would be, but I'm starting to get upset. <laughs> this is not fun. Oh, my gosh. Um. Hold on. Oh, my gosh. What? Has he done? Hmm. Well, isn't this fun? Let me go holler to him so I can figure out how to get this stuff off. Oh. This isn't fun. I'll be right back, ladies. I'll be right back. Mark? It's got all this stuff on the screen that I can't get off. Hmm. All the settings are on the screen. I'll be right there, guys. He's down to see if he can fix it. Oh. If not, I'll just have to do it with it on the screen, but I didn't want it to be that way. It's in here somewhere. I just don't remember where the setting is. Yeah. Well, I might have to just do it with it. I don't want to keep them too long. 
Oh, it's on here. I'm just hang on. I'm trying to find it. It's there. We go. Okay. Sorry, all. <laughs> he found a way, but I was really happy that he tried to reset the camera for me. It's looking a little yellow. It may take a little longer for us to get this worked out, but we will get it worked out. So I'm so sorry, y'all. Yeah, we clicked on that video camera. I, we clicked all around the screen and didn't get anywhere. So, but he fixed it. That's, that's why he gets paid the big bucks. <laughs> so hello, everybody. It is so, you've cut, oh, wow. That's wonderful, Linda. You have cut, you have cut a lot of hair. Oh, thank goodness, Laura, that it stopped. Because, you know, what? it's just not fun. And, you know, I don't like my hair getting thinner. In fact, I was, when I was born, I was such a hairy baby. I had hair down my back. And I think my parents called me McGilla Gorilla. So... But, you know, things change as you age. <laughs> so as long as I have some, my dad was mostly bald by the time he graduated high school. So I've been worried my whole life. So anyway. Oh, I. Oh, it only lasted three years, Curly. Wow. Yeah. One of the things when I do a little bit of, you know, lightning covering up the gray and I like it because it damages the hair more so it has more body because otherwise mine is just way too fine and it just flops. And I have to use that purple bottle Aquanet, Aquanet hairspray. You know that old stuff? I mean, it's lethal, but <laughs> that's the only thing that will hold my hair. So anyway, but oh, I, I, I love cutting hair. I used to cut all my family's. And uh, I still cut marks. So, but although he he has a great gr shaver groomer thing that he he does it he does most of it, and I do all the edges. So, all right. Well, I can't wait to show you this quilt because I'm very anxious. The hair comes. I hope it comes from my mama, but well, <laughs> I figured. I don't trust any of it. <laughs> so I was worried, you know. Okay, now I know we, we reset things because you know how I've been having a problem with the lighting and the camera going darker and darker and darker. So we thought if we've tried resetting it, it might work better. So we'll see. We will see. So what I'm doing right now is I put. I put, I've, I've got this started, and I haven't finished it, but you know Deb, she kind of hops around sometimes, but I put this faded gray right here. Let me, I want to cut these little threads that are going to get in the way. They'll bother me the whole time. All right, I wanted to go in here and drop in a little bit of a meadow where I'm going to put the cabin because I'm going to get this cabin done today if it's the last thing I do. So anyway, now, whoops, this actually should have gone on top of that. So what I will do, all right, let me pull this back up. Remember how I said you start at the top and you work your way down. All right. Let me see. I'm not sure if the camera is still focusing right with the lights on. So let me see. All right. You know what? I'm going to go this way for right now. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm very anxious to get my water put in here. Because I need to know where to stop my forest and all of that. So, let me, 
I guess I'm going to kind of lay it in, I believe. So how is everybody? I hope that you are very well and staying warm because it is right. When in doubt, check your, check your pattern. Um, hi, Kathleen, Laura, Pat. Oh, it's so good to see all of you. Teresa Louise is here. And thank you, Miss Linda, again for becoming our moderator for this. It gives me more um, comfort knowing that everybody will be looked after. Okay, so now what I'm trying to do is get, this is going to be part of the stream as it comes out of the mountain. And what, I've got to decide how it comes out, what exactly it does. So I'm going to just write, for right now, I'm just going, whoops, let me move everything down. I'm going to lay it here. Ugh. Hold on. Let me move it a little closer. All right. Let me get it tilted down a little more so you can see. All right. Here we go. So what I did is I started, I'm going to have this fabric, I'm going to have it going this way, like it's reflecting from the sky, but to act like a waterfall or a creek that's coming down, I'm going to put it that way for now. So, okay. And here is going to be the little body of water. Okay, and I might even, it's going to, and then we'll come back and we'll work on that cabin. Okay. But you start at the top and you layer it coming down. So that's where I'll need to, Every, you want every edge below covered, okay? So this I will take and cut right here. Cut this back. And remember, you leave at least a quarter to a half an inch because you want the next fabric to come right down. So, you know, Okay, so this, all right, so this is going to lay right on top of these fabrics, and I think I've got it in a pretty good place, so, Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here. That's why I just use little drops, because until everything's in its place, I won't know. So, all right. All right, so that's the where the water starts. And then it's going to come around this way. All right, let me turn my fan on, ladies. I'm having a little hot flash here. I don't get them often, but when I get excited. So, the trees are full of ice. Oh, my gosh. I heard about the terrible accident in Texas, and then, then there was a man, I think it was Oklahoma who saw a baby trapped in a car with one of those multiple car accidents and bless his heart he went and rescued the baby out of the car well he started to rescue the baby out of the car and a car came and hit him and trapped him between 
the baby's car and the car that hit him. And now he's got broken pelvis and broken ribs and oh my gosh, what a mess. But I love people who, who are heroes who just do it because it's the right thing to do. So, but what a shame. What a shame. So Kathleen's got the right idea. She went out yesterday and got milk and chocolates. Yay. <laughs> I think we might get just a little bit of glazing, but we still haven't had any good snow. But my daughter up in Maryland, she's got some pretty good snow. So now let me find, what did I do? Aha. Okay. So I'm trying to decide. I'm just going to get a good outline of this water. Okay. And I keep a tape measure handy because it really helps me to measure the wide part of the fabric that I'm going to need. So I know that I'm on the right road. And so I need to do this. Wow. Just enough. Nine inches. And look what I cut it. Nine inches. So I'm going to take this and okay, this end let me see. The, the waterfall is going to kind of come in here, and then I'm going to come this way, and the waterfall will kind of trickle this way. And remember that water finds its le own level. So you won't have, you might have the the little bends in the edge of the lake here. But for the most part, water finds its own level. And that's going to look relatively um, relatively smooth, unless it's taking a sharp bend. So what I'm going to do now is this pretty much is what I'm going to have for the water. So I'm just going to cut out the excess so I can... Put this where it needs to be. And because I need to get the tree line finished and I need to get the cabin done. So I will take these leftovers because I save all of that. You never know when you need just a little piece of it. All right. Right at what you see as the edge of the lake, right? I mean, edge of the stream coming into. Coming down here so that you know exactly where to place things. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the blue under the water. And I'm going to put the green on top. And I will end up cutting it out right along the edge of the water. But this is going to be my water. Oops, I want the purple to be under the tree. I want the purple to be under the water so I have some continuity. You don't want your pieces to fully stop and start because if this fabric, if this fabric shrinks, you'd be in big trouble. So what I'm going to do is leave the purple down here. I don't have to have all of it. I, well, no, I'm going to leave it because it's not that much. Then I'm going to put this water right here. All right. Then I'm going to bring that down. Okay. And this is going to be my waterfall. So I'll kind of tweak that later. But I'll put just a, a dot to make sure that I realize that's where that goes. All right. All right. So now I've got my water laid out. And this time I'm kind of letting the fabric do the work for me. Because what I'm concentrating on for this is doing all of the hand embroidery of the flowers. Okay. All right. So now let me. Oops. 
Okay. Now what I'm going to do. Oh, and I went ahead and ordered my protective gloves today because, you know, I cut my finger last week, last Thursday, and it's just about healed. It's still a little sore, like bruised, but it's so much better. But you know what? I almost cut my hand again the other day sitting, watching TV. So I'm glad that I went ahead and ordered those protective gloves because, you know, you maybe reach an age. Maybe that's what it is. All right, so now this tree line is going to continue down, and let me see. Tree line. Let's see what I drew for the tree line. All right, so now I drew right here, I drew a line for the tree line, and I'm going to go ahead and nip that off. And the reason I'm going to do that is so then I'll know where I have to finish putting trees, okay? Okay. And remember, nothing is perfectly straight, so act like you have had three or four cups of coffee in the last two hours, and just make your hand all wiggly. And that will do that. Okay. So now, let me come here. All right. And then, I have, this is going to... Most of this dark green is going to be tree line, but I'm going to put a little bit of lawn, so to speak, or tamed land right around this cabin so it doesn't look like it's sitting in the middle of the side of the mountain totally. All right. So now I need a piece of lawn to go back here. Let me see. Hmm. Let me look at all. No, I think I'm wondering. This might be good. I don't want it to be too green. Remember, it's going to be lighter colored, and it's going to be grayed out. G-R-E-Y or A-Y-E-D, grayed out. Um, because it's away. It's far away. Okay. Now, I need this piece to be about this long. All right, so, and then over here, we take this away, too. All right, so let me get this up here. All right, now, I like to often iron because it just makes everything lay flat and Kind of know where it's supposed to be. Because I've been lifting and tugging and all of that. So now what I need to do. I need to finish out my tree line. I've done a pretty good job with it. But I need to put the final touches on. I'm looking... Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to cut the tree shapes on the top. You know how I, 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 I make it all um, jagged and pointy-like to show the tops of the trees, making the, the jags little uneven 
Some will be a little cut shorter than others. Some are going to be very skinny. Some will be a little fatter just to give that jaggedy look to the tree line. Remember, this is your world. You are the boss of it. And you can make it look however you want. But this is the way to do this. I have it folded in half. So I'm doing twice as much at one time. Okay. Let me hurry up and get this done. I took it upstairs today because my room is rather cold down here in the basement. I took it up, but didn't really get any work done on it. I'm hung up watching this impeachment trial stuff. I'm finding it fascinating. Okay, let me pull this away a little. Now I've got one side going down and one side still tall, so I'll just cut it out like this. Okay. Now if this were going to be grass, I could go along and just make slices. But since this is going to be the treetop, I need to have spaces in here. Okay. Now I'm going to have the trees getting shorter as it comes to the edge of the lake. And that's also important is look at some of your photos. In fact, let me show you real quick. Um, trimming a bunch of little triangles in the top of this. Okay, so now you see what I've got? So I'm gonna come back up in here and I'm going to put this. And I like that there's two layers. You know, the more layers, the better. So I am I like it so much. Whoops. Although this was supposed to be over here. Hmm. I will put a different one there. Or I could put it here since I did all that really nice cutting. I think that's what I'll do. All right. I'm putting a little touch more glue on this because once I put this in, I think it's pretty well done. Okay. Then I will bring my iron over and dry that glue up pretty fast so it holds on to it. All right. Now here, let's see if I can try to find something to make, like, make it look like this tree line is coming down. Let me see if I can do a little piece of this. Okay. So now while I'm cutting this, a little bitty bear, wouldn't that be cute? Is it buffering again? I hope it's not. You know what I found? I read up the buffering that was happening Sunday is because of the Internet itself. And what I've got to make sure is that I'm getting enough Internet signal down here. Because that is frustrating to be everything's going along and and you think you you think you're on there and everything is being said and then you turn around and you're not. All right. Now let me see what this looks like. So what I'm going to do is trim this. Trim the bottom. Okay, let's see. Oh, I like that. I really like that. It gives it extra little punch, too. So now I will put this one on. All right. So it's just a matter of layering to really make sure that you get something exciting here. 
And that's very, very important. You want to keep the interest in your skyline. In fact, let me see. I was hoping I could do a few little short trees here. I might be able to. Let me see if I can. So, I love the idea of a bear in these trees. I love that idea. Okay, so if I put this here, I think I'm going to want to kind of put it behind a little. And don't worry about putting all these small fabrics down because remember, you're going to take a zigzag stitch. Now I'm going to pull up. Whoops. I'm going to pull up right here. Let me see if I can. I'm going to pull up right here and find it. And what I'm looking for is to give it that look of going, getting shorter and shorter and shorter. All right. Here we go. Oh, I like that. I like that now. So you've got a definite shape where it's coming down. And I think that gives it some, some really good realism. So I glue that one down first, making sure it's headed downhill. And then gluing this one on the top. Okay, so I like this very much. I like all the different greens that are involved. Let me see if I can focus in. See all the different, see all the different greens? I think that looks a lot more effective. Yes, and I will, be, I think it would be nice to have deer maybe and a bear. I, I think that would be very nice. All right, now. Now what I'm going to do, let me see, well, I think that's too definite. What I'm going to want in the very front of this is some more trees, like some more of this color, some more of the trees, so that I can get a lot of definition. I'm going to go ahead and take this. This time I'm going to fold it, whoops, this time I'm going to fold it in quarters. I'm going to fold it in quarters and I'm going to come along and wherever it's folded, make sure you cut the fold and I'm going to go ahead and all four layers at one time, give this individual tree personality. And remember, just little changes, just making one a little bit shorter and wider and one a little taller and skinnier. Because let's face it, variety is what makes things look real. Okay? So now I'm going to do a tall one here. And, and I'm just cutting out little Vs to give it the triangle treetop look. Okay. Okay. Oops. Let me see if I can pull this last bit out. I love these little snips, but this is a lock. And, you, you know, when you close them, you slide it up and it's locked. The locks don't work that great, and they will slide up on their own and make it so you can't fully close the scissors. It's the only complaint I have with them is I wish they could fix that problem because I use mine so much. All right. So now I'll save this one here, 
And now I'm going to come along here and let's, oh, and what I notice is it's got designs all different ways. So I can make what looks like a low shrubbery this way. When you look at fabric, you know, look at it in all different directions. But see how that makes it look like really low, wild shrubbery? And that would go perfect right on the other side of this cabin. So now I've got, whoops, I lost that one. Where is it? What did I do with it? <laughs> I thought I put it there. Maybe, oh, here it is. It's stuck to this. Okay. I've got red everywhere all right so i'm going to save this up here i'm going to save this up here and now i'm going to try to do some more cutting with this and i think see how this i on this batik it has some very dark areas but then it has some very very light areas hey miss jody sweetheart and so what I'm going to do with this is I do like using, I don't think I need to use it that short, but I do like using variable levels for the trees. And here we go. Before we leave here tonight, I want to show you the pictures again. I got some new ones in from B and Linda. And every time I get a chance, you know I love to show Frankie because he is just amazing. So I find with this tree line, by doing as many fabric cuts like this as I can. Now, this is, let's be honest, this is probably out west somewhere. But if it were a deciduous forest, I would be doing more rounded shapes. But these most likely are evergreens. So that's why we do the classic triangle top evergreens. I am going to put a regular tree in. And on that one, I will do a mushroom cap type top of the tree. But these are so easy to do. But um, if I were to do like a fall scene with more deciduous color, then I would just do lots and lots of trees individually, lay them on top of each other, you know, at di not directly on top of each other, but I like that better than trying to just plop a fabric on and hope that it will look realistic. But the reason I use this piece of fabric is it's got so much light up here. And the light makes it, the light's batik marks in here is what makes it look realistic. So now I will come and put this right here. And I'm going to tuck this part under. This is great. All right. So let me get some glue on it. Oh, my glue bottle was dripping, so let me clean up those drips and put it on here. All right. But in this fun, everyone can do collage. Because if you can cut with a pair of scissors, if you've got a little bit of imagination, you can do this. So now I'm going to pull this. The tree line is going to stop just a little bit below this. So I think I'm going to bring this down just a little bit to keep me from having to cut yet another one. So. All right. So now this one has an edge of trees going down at this edge. But I like that. I like it very much. I've got a lot of little fluffies here. Let me try to get these off real quick. Okay. Oh, 
All right. So here we go. Now, if this is when we'll come in here. And see, I'm going to have the cabin here. I don't want this is such a great piece of fabric that I don't want to waste it behind something. I want it to show. All right. I like that. I like it very much. Okay. And the line for it is right about there. So now I'll come put some glue. All right. And then to make it nice and low, you see how adding, now adding this. Let me see if I can bring that light on just a touch. But now I can add this right before the cabin because your eyes are going to be drawn to that cabin. So it's really good to do your detail work where you know people's eyes will be drawn to. So this is going to be right along this edge. Now I have to come in here and cut back the line of lawn for the cabin. Okay, whoops. Come back here. Mm, all right. So now here is the line of lawn for the cabin. You notice I don't have the lawn glued down because I need to keep pulling it back and exposing exactly where to put the cabin. Now, and I've got a picture of a cabin. I took this photo. I, I took the photo off the internet when I was doing my research, but I wanted my cabin to be turned this way. So I flipped the photo before I printed it. Let me see if you can see that cabin. I flipped it so it would be the right direction and I could see it better. All right. So now I've got this cabin right here. Whoops. Right here in front of me. And let's now work on the cabin. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. All right. There we go. So the cabin, I've got a tree to do. I've got a cabin to do. I've got a roof to do. I thought I would make the roof out of this. So... Although, I'll tell you what, that looks pretty good yeah, if you were going to be doing logs. But I think I'd still want to stay with this as a roof. Aww. Oh, are you doing Frankie's Bride? Oh, oh my gosh, Miss Jody. Now you're making me feel better because... Poor Frankie has been breaking my heart, girlfriend. He is, you captured his emotion so beautifully. I mean, I was amazed. I, you See, I've never done anything, any work like that, using the light and dark and whatever fabrics you want. I've never done that. And I never would have guessed that you could have made something so realistic as you did. Okay, so now I'm going to take and I'm going to draw the roof on this. And I'm going to go ahead and do the chimney out of this too.
All right. So now I've drawn the roof shape and I'm going to trim it out. Okay. I'm giving the bottom of that roof a little ziggity zaggity feeling there. Okay, come along the top and cut this chimney out. And it's just nice to have it out of one piece. And it's far enough away, you don't have to worry about, well, does it look like brick or stone? It won't matter because it's too far away to really be seen properly. All right. So now, in fact, once I put this cabin roof on, I can go ahead and leave this green fabric down here. Okay. Let's see. All right, so this is going to go right here. All right, now, the tree, I don't have to worry about this dark part right here because the tree that I've got planned is going to cover that. So I think I can go ahead and glue this down. And now glue this cabin roof down. Whoops. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's see. So there's my cabin roof. Let me glue all this down since I keep yanking it up. Now, one thing I wanted to tell you is when I went to my first landscape class, there were some ladies who had where they wanted a stone wall, they had stone fabric. Where they wanted a blue sky, they had the blue sky and the clouds already in the the fabric where they wanted a house they had fabric with a house that they just cut the house out you can do that and especially if it's your first one oh what the heck but what i would like to see i would like to see you use a little bit more imagination just a little bit more imagination because that's when it gets fascinating it's the difference in doing a paint by number, which there's a time and place for, and doing your own painting. So just kind of keep that in mind, if you would. Now, the thing I love about this fabric is it has different kinds, lights and darks. I love, love, love fabric like this that does all kinds of different things. You notice, I do not tell you the names of the fabrics I use. And there's a reason for that. Because honestly, fabric lines go in and out so quickly that by the time I tried to tell you which one I'm using, it would be gone. Okay? So, hi, Diane57. Good to see you, sweetie. So here, what we're going to do here is I'm going to use... I'm going to use... The darker part under the eaves and the lighter part on the side. So here, I'm going to come in right here. Now, when it comes to the windows and doors, you know what I'm going to do for that? I'm going to probably use ink tents or embroidery or thread painting, something like that. And... That makes it a lot easier than trying to cut minuscule, but if you want to, you can. But I'm not going to, I'm saving my energy. The focus of this quilt is going to be 
all the wildflowers that we put in detail. And because Mark lived in Texas for 27 years and loved it dearly, we, he and I, while we were watching something about the Texas bend, we were watching, looking that in the bend, they have blue bonnets that are three feet tall. And we thought, whoa, that would be awesome. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so here is the side of the cabin. Then I'm going to cut the darker shape. And you know what? I'm not going to just cut this. I'm going to draw it first. Because I've got to draw, I've got to draw, whoops, not letting you see it. I've got to draw this upside down triangle that comes down to like a rectangle at the bottom. So I'm going to, let me see, I'm going to lay it up here next to my roof line okay and this is going to go straight down here and then it's going to go up here and it's going to go out and down here and then down okay so now let me get this cut and I'll show you some more. But see how I take and out of this fabric I got a lighter color side and then I got a darker shadow area. Now I love that. Boy, if I can make one fabric work two different ways. All right, now I'm going to glue this down. But do you see how easy it is? You just draw it. If you want to, you can take a light box and, and make it. So just whichever way you want to do it, this is your landscape, and you are the boss of it. So, all right. Now let me bring my iron in. Now I don't want to get ahead of myself, but what I'm going to do right here is this is going. So I will use my ink tints and I will put in all the shadows and an outline of doors and windows. Okay. Now you notice I haven't done anything right here. That's because we're going to have a tree that starts down here, and that part in the tree is going to hide the back of this cabin. But before I can put the tree here, I've got to have the background for this area. So, hmm. This might be pretty cool. I've got two that are very similar. One has more yellow than the other. I have some of this, but I'm afraid this should go in the foreground because it's so definite and it's darker. So I'll put this over here. Hello, everybody. And Diane57, I don't know if you heard me say the other day, but I was needing some help. This one is even more yellow. Hmm, I kind of like this idea. I don't know. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be between these two. Maybe this looks too tall, although I wanted to give a, 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 a feeling of depth. And I thought, yeah, this, this I'm thinking might give you a feeling of depth. Maybe just a little band of it. 
So I'm going to come in here and see right where this line goes down. This is going to be like on a sloping. Then this is going to be level and this other side is going to slope too. What I'm going to do, and you learn when you shop for fabric, you don't shop for big pieces of fabric. You shop for a lot of little things that would do a really good job as landscape fabric. All right, so I need to trim this off. And don't worry, I'm going to save that. The thing I love about landscapes is it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much at all. Okay. So now I'm roughly going to cut it out. Roughly. You hear that? I'm roughly going to cut it out along the, this line here. But just very roughly. Remember right now, we are blocking in color. We are not... We are not deciding. And see how when I put it on here, see how it has plenty of overhang because my next fabric will go on top of this. And you just keep going down that way. Or this will go on top of that, whichever. But always have it a little longer. Now, what I'm going to want to do with this is I'm going to want to... Make it a little uneven, not too much, because it's not a forest, but just, just a little bit here and there, maybe where the bright yellow comes up, and then kind of go just little ziggity-zaggity for a bit. But we have to work from the back forward instead of for the foreground back. And it, it, if you don't understand it now, it will become clear the more we do this. Okay. And let me show you what this is looking like. See this? I really like that because it gives. Now, one thing I just noticed, I'm not going to have this covered up, so I need to trim this. No zigzags on a cabin. It just wouldn't look right. Okay. All right. So now I've got most of my cabin trimmed. Okay. So here we are. Okay. And don't forget, if you're working on this at home, please send me photos of your work to our time to quilt. Let me see. Our, whoops, I've got to put it on the right thing. Okay. Our... Time to quilt, all one word, at pwc.com. Here we go. All right. And if you want a pattern, if I have free copies of the pattern, or if you want to send photos of your work, or just even comments, although feel free to comment up at the bottom of this, too. I do love your comments and try to respond to them pretty quickly because I appreciate you taking that time. All right, now let me get this smoothed out just a little. Hold on. Sometimes things get pulled a little. Sometimes I put glue on it and it stretches a little. So just be prepared to go back in and smooth it. Now you know why I use the iron so much. The iron is my friend here and helps keep everything where it should be and flat. Okay. 
All right, now let me see if that will lay nice and flat. But an iron will tame it, let me tell you. An iron is a very good fabric tamer. And fabrics need taming, let me tell you. Okay, so here we go. Oh, yeah, you can comment after hours or you just comment here. I'm going to, tr to work about 15 more minutes because I do want to show you some photos. And I told you we would have this cabin done, and I want to make sure we've got that. Okay. I sometimes try to shoot for an hour, but I'm enjoying myself too, so if I don't have anything else really going on. Then I'll stay and play. All right. So now, now do you see this fabric? I think that was the right choice. You don't know how to act without an iron. So let me see. It's going to come over to here. And let me go ahead and... All right, let me see. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue this down. I'm very, very happy with how this looks. And I think it really does give it a sense of depth. You want this cabin to look far away and I think it really does too I'm very happy with it okay pull this down just I want just a little bit of that grass this grass right here I want a little bit of that to show just a little okay now I'll press this down all right I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to make the tree and then we'll go look at photos. And I understand if you can't stay, I totally understand, sweetie pies. Not a worry at all. I was wondering if this would be a good tree. But you know what? I'm not seeing... Uh, I'm not quite seeing what I want on here. So I think what I'm gonna do is bring in this fabric. One thing I miss about going to quilt shows is you will find like in North Carolina, we have schoolhouse quilts and she does such a wonderful job of having fat quarter landscapes so you can go in for just around two dollars three dollars and you can buy some wonderful wonderful landscape fabrics and uh, so I usually try to really stock up on them now what I'm doing is I'm getting this wood look fabric but remember it's not it's a little too big to really look like a tree. So I am careful how I cut it. Okay. This. And this is going to help. Now, tree's a little too tall. So I'm going to come and chop that part. And then... What I need to do is I want a few little indications of a root. You know how you kind of see the, the root show. But then I need to come in here and I need to shrink this tree just a little. Remember, trees are wider at the bottom. They get narrower at the top. So I like the bottom. Pretty good, but I need to come and start getting narrower 
and narrower. I can come in and add branches all I want. It might even still be too big at the bottom because I want this to look far away too. So I'm going to come in here and narrow this down. Okay, let's see. I might leave it like that for right now. I can always pull it off later and change it. But I'll put this here. And then I'm going to use some of these extras as branches. Oops. The branch also is wider where it meets the tree and gets narrower as it goes out. So let me add a little more heft to that branch right there. All right. And then this one. Okay, so, and then what I'm going to do is figure out what I'm going to use for the canopy of that tree. And I might start with something like this. That's why I love batiks. And I look for an area that has a lot of dapple in it. Okay. Now this will just be the first layer. I can make the tree. I can make many layers to put on the tree. Okay. Looks like I might not have made it quite wide enough. What I can do in that case is lean this back for the back part and put a little more, put another piece of dapple. Coming out this way. And, and so you can either alter the tree or alter the limb. Let me see. All right, there. Now, let me try turning this off and pulling it forward. Whoops. Don't drop your scissors on your foot. All right. Luckily, I, I didn't. But, okay. 
So now do you see we've got the tree trunk, we've got the canopy of the tree, and we've got the cabin. One thing I'm going to do, because I've done this on another landscape, is I will be putting a swing hanging from this tree. And I love doing that. You want to know that there was a child living there at some point. So now I'm going to hold it up and let you look at where we are at this point. And then we'll come back next week. And we'll get the rest of the grass. We've got to do a tree line over here. So we'll, we'll get all of that done next week. Because I'm anxious to get the color blocking done. And to then start on thread painting and ink tints painting. Hmm. It's acting awfully stiff there. All right. So here, whoops, hold on. My water's going south here. Oh, hold on a second, guys. <laughs> All right. Sometimes fabric doesn't behave. <laughs> okay. Let's hold it back up and see. Whoa. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to see if I've got it all shown correctly. But here is the cabin, the tree, and the field in front of it. Okay. So, we're getting there. We are getting there. And we might want to try to see if we can do a reflection of the mountain in the water. We'll see. We can make it as complicated or the depth looks good. Oh, thank you, Polly. That's what I go for because that's the hard part sometimes is getting the depth right. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to put a tree in front of the cabin, not up beside it. And that's why I wanted the taller grass over there to kind of push that cabin back because I'm dealing with just a two-dimensional, I'm dealing with just two-dimensional, which means height and width. I don't have depth. I have to create depth by fooling the eye. So thank you, Miss Polly. You made my night. All right. Are you ready? And you can still see, oh, Sue Smith is here. It actually is easy. Um, I've only done, maybe this is my fourth or fifth, and you just play. And remember, it's just fabric. And it's just little bits of fabric. So if you cut something and you put it on there and you hate it, pull it off, do it again. That's all you have to do. So, and once we get all the color blocked in, then we'll use our invisible thread. I'll have to use some parts smoky and some parts clear, mostly clear probably. And we will tack it all down so that I don't have it flopping off. So, okay, let's see what you have brought to this. I'm still trying on OBS, but don't hold me to it. It's proving a little more difficult than this old brain wants it to be. All right, I'm just gonna pretty much try to remember to show you the art quilts. We'll see all on Sunday, okay? All right, now I'm going to try very carefully not to detach, you guys. So, because when I am on, when I'm showing you these photos, I can't see you because I have, I've got the screen covered up. See, there you are, and then I have to cover the screen. Well, let's take one more look at Miss B's landscape because it is a beauty. There's Miss B's landscape, and um, she said she's working on a new one with less green. She got sick and tired of so much green. I don't blame her, but this is a beauty. It's worth it, Miss B. It is worth it. Okay, now let's see where we're going to go now. I'm just showing you the art quilt. Here is Miss Betty Middleton's wonderful lion. 
And I am so excited because I'm taking a class from the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival, and I'm going to learn how to do this technique, this collage animal. So thank you, Ms. B, for sharing that with me. All right, let's see where else we're going. Um, 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 oh, Cheryl does such good work. But I'm looking specifically, whoops, Deborah Dunnell. Did she have any art quilts? Yes, yeah, she did have an art quilt. She had this wonderful collage kitty, which I love. That gives me all kinds of hope and inspiration that my collage animal will turn out to. So thank you, Miss Deborah Dunnell. That is an inspiration. All right, let's go back. Oh, yes, Miss Dolores. She has a wonderful landscape quilt with a child in it. Oh, it's absolutely magical. And don't forget, she won the third place in the Hoffman Challenge. And the thing I love about this is she had gotten her medications mixed up and it sent her into a deep depression. She worked on this for six months until they got her system all straightened out. And this, this is a true work of love and hope. So thank you, Ms. Dolores. Plus, don't forget, she does commissions for people who want their dogs commemorated. And she does absolutely gorgeous work. We'll see more of that on Sunday. Now, who else has done... I'm so excited for Miss Jamie. She is been, has been asked to do some work on a special project for a craft guild, and I'll show you more of that on Sunday. She's so talented. I'm so tickled for her. Um, let me see. Jeannie. Oh, we've got a new Jeannie, and I can't wait to show her work this Sunday. Okay, get ready. This is exquisite. This is Miss Jody's work. She started this not long ago, and I love how you can take dotted fabric and piece by piece turn it into a very moving work of art. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Look at this. I told her that that is just a very touching, kind of heart-wrenching work. And I'm so glad she's making him a Mrs. Frankenstein because he looks so lonely. <laughs> I don't want him to be lonely. <laughs> so amazing work. Our Jody is a talented artist right here in our own midst. Okay, Miss Linda sent me some of her landscape work. You know she's talented. Look at this. I love. Whoa, look at look at all of this. Okay, let me bring it down a little bit more. But isn't this beautiful? And she's also done some fabric called fractures. And oh my gosh, it's wonderful. So let me show you the next thing with hers. I've got to bring that size down. Look at this. This is a painting. And I can't wait to find out how she does this. That is exquisite. Beautiful job. Okay. Bring this down. Look at these fabrics she made. Isn't this amazing? Wow. So somehow to get all of the creases and textures and colors. That's gorgeous. Just beautiful, Miss Linda. Miss Linda is a very, very talented artist. We are so lucky to have some very talented people. Let me see, is there anyone else? Um, 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 I think that might be it for the art quilts, but don't worry. This weekend, I have plenty. Oh, let me see. Now, this is paper collage, but these are definitely landscapes. And this is Benalga 
utter back. And oh my gosh, I love her. Her work is so beautiful. Benalda Utterback, and on last week's Sunday show, I think it was last week's Sunday show, I gave you the shortcut to her Facebook page. And it's Art by Vinalda, and she is amazing. Love it. Okay, I think that is it for today for the art quilts. But don't worry, I have lots of photos to share with you Sunday. All right, let me come back. Can someone let me know if you can still hear me and see me? Is Vicki here? Hello, everybody. Aren't these people just incredible? They're so talented. I want to thank you. I think this is a record for number of people watching. There's Vicki Robles. You know what is so neat is I was watching Alex Anderson, and I saw Vicki there. I saw Kathy Klein there. And it was so nice to see some of you there. So I want you to once again thank Miss Linda for her moderating, Miss Diane57 for her moderating. Thank you for joining me tonight. And uh, this is fun. I get excited when I see this because it starts coming together so quickly. And I get so tired of making half square triangles. So doing an art quilt and a landscape quilt is so much fun. And don't tell anybody. But it's a lot easier. It is. And when you enter them in a contest, how do they know if you had everything placed just right? It's your photo. It's, I mean, it's your creation. So you might end up coming over to the side of us art quilters because there's so much and the sky is the limit. You can add any kind of technique, any kind of beads, um, dryer lint. <laughs> I mean, anything you want. The sky's the limit. We're so lucky to be living now where there's so many wonderful things to help us make works of art. And it lets our souls just sing. So thank you for joining me. Everyone, have a good couple of days. Some of you I will see Sunday. And I've been working very hard on my Valentine's Table Runner. And I better come up with our next project. So I will see you soon. Thank you so much for joining me. You're the best. And never forget, every day is a great day to create. Show me, send me your work your pictures. I'll show them. I'll show you off to everybody. Thank you for joining me. Take good care, all of you. You are the best. See you next Thursday for Art Quilt Thursdays. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Stay warm. No falling on the ice and snow, please. Okay. Bye-bye. Get those vaccinations if you can. Soon as they let my bracket, I'm in there, boy. I'm getting my vaccination. Take good care, everybody. Bye-bye. You're the best.